Are you on a weight loss journey, a weight loss adventure? Are you taking GLP-1 medications like Manjaro, Zetboundo, Zempic, or Wagovi, or do you want to? Well, today I'm going to talk about Eli Lilly, one of the big two manufacturers' strategic expansion and innovative pipeline in GLP-1 medications. During this week's earnings call, Eli Lilly revealed exciting developments within its pharmaceutical pipeline, highlighting 11 new molecules undergoing clinical trials. These developments span multiple therapeutic areas and mechanisms indicating a robust future for the company in tackling the disease of obesity. Hello everybody, I'm Christopher Durham and this is The Downsized. This is the channel that my wife Lorraine and I started to talk to you guys and tell you about our GLP-1 adventure. I have personally been on a combination of Zepabound Manjaro and compounded terzepatide since September of last year and lost a little more than 75 pounds. So this is a very personal journey for me. Between my wife and I, we've lost a little more than 120 pounds. Please, if you haven't already, take a moment to like and subscribe. And as always, we're not doctors. Please consult with a healthcare professional before starting a new weight loss program or treatment. We've talked about the Eli Lilly call several times already. If you haven't watched those videos, we go into a lot of detail. But today, I wanted to dive into some of the innovation and the new products they're talking about, kind of get a little geeky and science a little nerd out, if you will. This week's call revealed a few key things. Lilly is wildly profitable. I think we already knew that. They will release Zepbound in 2.5 and 5 milligram vials, and they have released quick pins in Europe. Make sure to watch our extended videos covering the entire announcement. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description. So for this video, I'm going to dive deeper into some of the new products Lilly discussed during the call, emphasizing their scientific advancements, potential impact on the market, and potential impact on you and I on, and uh, weight loss in the GLP-1 community. This one is always the hardest one because drug names are the hardest thing in the world to say. We always stumble over them. If I misspeak at any time, I apologize. We do the best we can. We'll start with Orforglipron, the oral GLP-1 small molecule. Eli Lilly is pioneering Orforglipron, an oral GLP-1 receptor agonist, through an extensive phase three clinical program targeting obesity and type two diabetes. Orforglipron is a non-peptide small molecule designed for oral administration, so it's a pill you take, which is a significant shift from the injectable GLP-1 therapies currently available, and it could open up to a lot of different people who are unwilling or unable to take a shot. Who knows, it could even bring the price down. The drug is designed to work by mimicking the action of incretin hormones, which increase insulin secretion and decrease appetite, leading to improved blood sugar control and weight loss. The primary advantage of Orforglipron is its oral administration, which could greatly enhance patient compliance and accessibility. It could be easier to make, so it's easier to distribute, it's easier to take. Simple enough. In clinical trials, Orforglipron has shown promising results with patients experiencing an expected weight loss of around 10 to 12 percent of their baseline body weight over 12 to 18 month period, depending on the dosage. This level of weight loss is comparable to some injectable GLP-1 therapies, making Orforglipron a potential groundbreaking option for those who prefer oral medication. The drug is currently being tested in nine ongoing trials, assessing its efficacy in weight loss and glycemic control, with results anticipated in 2025 and a potential market entry around 2026, pending regulatory approval. Up next, terzepatide. We know it. We love it. I've lost 76 pounds on it. But this is about expanding it beyond weight loss. We've reported a good bit on this, but we'll walk through it again. Terzepatide, initially celebrated for its weight loss capabilities, is now being explored for various indications beyond its original application. This drug is a dual agonist targeting both the GLP-1 and the GIP, glucose-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide. That's a mouthful. This dual mechanism of action not only aids in weight loss, but also improves glycemic control and potentially impacts cardiovascular outcomes. In clinical trials, terzepatide has demonstrated remarkable weight loss results with patients losing an average of 20 to 22 percent of their baseline body weight over a 72-week period. This makes terzepatide one of the most effective weight loss drugs. 
And as we know, it's worked for Lorraine and I. Beyond weight loss, though, the Surmount OSA Phase 3 trial has shown terzepatide's potential in treating obstructive sleep apnea, where it significantly reduced the risk of worsening heart failure and improved physical symptoms. So the sleep apnea I can personally attest to. I was waking up numerous times during the night, snoring very heavily, and my wife says, hey, we're all but done. The doctors are happy with it, so that's awesome. These broad applications could see further market expansion by 2025 and 2026 with the potential for terzepatide to be used in treating a variety of metabolic and cardiovascular conditions. The drug's ability to treat and target multiple pathways could make it a versatile tool in managing complex health issues linked to obesity. So what does that mean for us? Well, it means it does a lot of cool stuff, and it helps with a lot of things that are often comorbidities with obesity that in all likelihood will translate into an expansion of insurance coverage. And the call was a lot of what the CEO of Eli Lilly was talking about. Their goal is to open up access by including more comorbidities, right? So if it will pay for my sleep apnea medication and it cost me $25, well, that's a lot cheaper than the $1,100 rate that it would be off the shelf or for the cardiovascular disease or whatever. Lots of opportunities to get more people included under the tent of terzepatide and they're doing their best to do that and the research says it's helping. So we love that. Up next, retitrutide, which is a next generation GLP-1 therapy. Retitrutide represents the next wave of innovation in GLP-1. Unlike earlier GLP-1 receptor agonists, retitrutide also targets the glucagon receptor, which may enhance its metabolic effects. The addition of glucagon receptor agonism is designed to promote additional metabolic benefits, such as an enhanced fat oxidation and improved lipid metabolism, which could lead to even greater weight loss and cardiovascular benefits. In early clinical trials, retitrutide has shown significant promise with expected weight loss outcomes of approximately 50 to 20 percent of baseline body weight over 72-week period. This would position retitrutide as a highly effective treatment for severe obesity, treating the disease of obesity with potential additional benefits in glycemic control and cardiovascular health. The ongoing Transcend Phase 3 program is expected to provide more detailed results by 2026, with retitrutide likely to become a key player in the management of the disease of obesity. Finally, bimagrimab focused on fat and muscle mass management. If you've been around the GLP-1 community very long, the conversation is very often about managing muscle loss. I often think that's a bit of a passive aggressive way to talk people out of using medications. I've done videos on muscle loss. It's certainly something that should be a concern, but it never outweighs the benefit of reducing your risk of, of obesity or of treating the disease of obesity. Let's look at what bimagrumag does. Well, bimagrumab is a unique candidate in Eli Lilly's pipeline, targeting the activin receptor type 2B to promote muscle growth while simultaneously reducing fat mass. Unlike traditional weight loss medications that primarily focus on reducing body weight, bimagrumab aims to improve body composition by maintaining or increasing muscle mass while reducing fat mass. This dual action approach addresses a common concern in weight loss treatments, how to lose fat while preserving muscle. When combined with GLP-1 receptor agonists, bimagrumab has demonstrated the potential to achieve a weight loss of approximately 10 to 15 percent of baseline body weight with a significantly more favorable ratio of fat loss to muscle preservation. This combination therapy could be particularly beneficial for patients who are concerned about losing muscle mass during their weight loss adventure. Imagrumab's unique mechanism of action could make it an attractive option for those seeking weight loss and an overall body composition improvement. If clinical trials prove successful, Imagrumab could progress to phase three in the next few years with potential market entry projected around 2027 to 2028. I think this is truly exciting. It, it begins to solve for one of the big complaints about GLP-1s, you know, that rapid weight loss. And it's not that GLP-1s make you lose muscle, it's that rapid weight loss does and you can't select it out. So if there is a drug that can help us maintain or even increase muscle mass while losing weight, 
why wouldn't we want to do that? It is our hope at the Downsize that expanding the options available for treating the disease of obesity will provide more effective solutions for those suffering from this crippling disease. As more medications enter the market, we also anticipate that competition could lower prices and increase availability, making these life-changing treatments accessible to a broader range of people. It's also very possible that these could be targeted to different individuals, and maybe there's one that works better for you and not for another person. We've seen that there are certain people that do not react well or and don't react at all to some of these, so maybe some of the new ones would be helpful in that fight. We are committed to keeping you informed about these developments and advocating for the accessibility of these treatments. They must be available to all of those who need them. They must be in stock and they must be at a reasonable price to treat this deadly disease. Please, if you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe for more detailed updates on these and other innovations in the world of GLP-1s. My name is Christopher Durham and this is The Downsized. Thank you very much for joining me.